Hey, it's Paul with ebooktemplates101.com, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Kindle Direct Publishing. We've had a lot of people ask us what Kindle Direct Publishing is and how they should use it and how it works. So I'm just going to kind of cover some of the basics in this video. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but I do kind of want to show you how it works. So when you have an ebook that you want to put on the Amazon Kindle and you're ready to put it on the Kindle, this is where you go. And you can get there by going to kdp.amazon.com. And you create an account if you don't already have one, and then sign in and tell Amazon you want to upload and publish a book. And this is the page that you get to first. So the first part of the page here is asking you whether you want to be part of KDP Select, which is the Kindle Owner's Lending Library. And I definitely recommend you check that. As long as you're doing a regular book and not a public domain type of book, you should check it because it's been selling a lot more books for authors, so it's been very beneficial. You don't have to check it, but I recommend that you do. So the next part is entering your book details, and this is pretty basic and self-explanatory. You know, for your book name, this is where you put your official book title. And next you choose if your book is part of a series or not. If it's not, just leave it unchecked. If it is, you want to check that box, put the series title here and the volume number there. Now we've had a lot of people ask us, what if it's going to be part of a series? Let's say this is volume one, and you know you're going to do future volumes. Then yes, I would definitely put that it's part of a series, put the series title and volume one, in this case, in there. And that way, when you do volume two, this is already going to be set up in the system correctly. And you can add volume two in there in the future. You can put an addition number. You don't have to, but you can if you want to. And then here is where you put your description. Now, this is important. You have 4,000 characters. This book description is what's going to be on your Amazon sales page. So when somebody finds your book on Amazon and they're looking at your book page trying to decide whether to buy it or not, this description is going to be what they see. So you want to make sure that your description is as good as you can possibly do it. You want it to describe your book well and really sell without being salesy. You want to sell people on buying your book and make it as interesting and descriptive as possible. So this is very important. This is what they see when they're looking at your book on Amazon deciding whether to buy it or not. Okay, next you have book contributors. So this is where you can put yourself in as the author. You can just click add contributors and then put yourself in and choose author. Also, you can have multiple contributors. So if you want to put your editor in there or a photographer or something like that to acknowledge them, you would put that in there as well. So you can set that up. You don't have to add any if you don't want to, but you can. Then you can choose language here. And that'll be the primary language your book was written. So we'll keep it with English on there. Publication date, you don't have to select it. It'll be automatic if you don't. But if you want to, you can choose the date for that. The publisher, uh, if you have a publisher, you can put them in there. But uh, if you're self-publishing, you could either put yourself or just leave that blank. And then ISBN, you can just leave that blank unless you have an ISBN number and then put that in there. Okay. Next part is your publishing rights. This is very important. If this is a public domain book that you're doing, you would definitely check this box there. And you want to make sure you review the guidelines, which there's a link to them right here. And also make sure that it's not already on the Amazon Kindle system. And then you can do your public domain. If it's not a public domain, in most cases, you know, if it's you're writing a regular book, you're going to choose this is not a public domain. The next section is for targeting your customers. This is also very important. You can put up to seven categories. It says optional, but I would definitely do that. And you just click on add categories and then you can choose, kind of look at all the categories and see what categories make sense and choose which categories you want to add. And definitely I would add all seven. You want to add as many as you can. So I would add seven categories. I would kind of go through all that and choose seven and then add those categories just like that. 
And another quick tip is to find categories on Amazon that are some of the more popular categories that get a lot of views. And then hopefully your book will kind of match one of those categories. I would not add categories that don't make any sense. So if your book is about tennis, I wouldn't put it in a category for art or something like that. So make sure the categories make sense, but definitely try and add all seven categories possible. Okay, the next part is uploading your book cover. So this is also very important. This is um, not the cover that you actually have in your formatted file that you're going to upload to Amazon. This is the cover that will go on your Amazon search page and your Amazon book page. So when somebody's searching for your book and they find your book on Amazon, this is going to be the cover that they see. So you want it to be a very good, very high resolution, great looking cover image of your book. So make sure that you absolutely do that. They also have image guidelines here you can look at to make sure that you're uploading the correct size file and everything, but uh, I would definitely upload a good high resolution cover image of your book. And the next part is uploading your book file. You want to choose if you want to enable or disable digital rights management. And that's, you know, I'll leave that up to you. I don't really have any recommendations on that. Some authors like to um, have digital rights and some don't. Uh, but in terms of formatting, that's where our template comes in. If you don't already have it, I would absolutely get ebooktemplates101.com to get our template. Makes it very easy, you know, and looking at all of the issues with authors getting bad reviews on Amazon. Some of the top reasons they're getting bad reviews from customers is poor formatting. And using, you know, trying to do it yourself or using some inferior templates that are out there is causing this. So again, if you don't already have it, check out our Kindle template at ebooktemplates101.com. So what you do is you just browse for your file, you know, you choose your digital rights and then browse and upload your actual file. And once you select it, just click upload book and then you go save and continue from there. So once you've uploaded your book, uh, Amazon will con convert it into the Kindle format. And again, it's not going to be right unless you've given them a good, you know, perfect format to convert from. But assuming you have, then you go to this next part here where you verify your publishing territories. Do you want to publish worldwide or just individual? Maybe you just want to go to the U.S. or U.S. and U.K. You can choose that. I recommend going worldwide, but you can choose where you want your book to be published. And then you can choose your royalty. Do you want to go 35% or 70%? And there's a little pricing page here that I'll show you. So there's a pricing page that you can click on and kind of show you the different options and things like that. But the main thing is the 70% royalty books that consist primarily of public domain content are not eligible for the 70% royalty. So if you do have a public domain book, you're going to have to choose 35%. So you'll get 35% of every sale. Uh, if you have a regular book that you're doing, then in most cases, you can choose 70%. And then this is where you set your prices. And you can um, choose your price here. If you're doing the 70% royalty, it has to be priced a minimum of $299. So even if you have a regular book, let's say it's not public domain, you have a regular book, but you want to price it like for 99 cents, then you're going to have to do the 35% royalty. So a 35% royalty, you can go 99 cents up to $200, but you can go as low as 99 cents. If you want the 70% royalty, it's got to be between $299 and 10 bucks. So your type of book will determine your royalty as well as where and how you want to price it. So in this case, let's just say, let's price it at $2.99 and we'll get the maximum 70% royalty from that. And then you can check this box to automatically set all these other areas based on the US price and it does all the conversions for you. 
so you don't have to worry about it. And it tells you your estimated royalty. If we sell it for $2.99, our estimated royalty is going to be a dollar and five cents for every one we sell. And that is at the 35% rate. Since we're at the 70% rate, we'll be getting two dollars and eight cents, which is much better. So uh, that's how you set your royalty. And there's got some more information here about pricing. And then here, this is where we enabled that on the previous page, the, the lending. And you'd have to go back to that previous page to uncheck that. But then all you do is just click on this box right here. It's just telling you, you know, make sure that you have the necessary rights to uh, for your book. Essentially saying, yes, this is my book. This is my work. I'm not stealing somebody else's work, etc. Then you can either save it for later if you're not ready to publish it yet, or click Save and Publish. And when you do click Save and Publish, it goes into Amazon's system for re review, and they'll review and make sure you chose the correct royalty and pricing and everything. They're going to review your book, make sure that it's legit, it's not already on the Amazon Kindle system. And once that's done, and it could take anywhere from a few hours to at least a few days, just kind of depends, then your book will go live in the Kindle store. So those are the basics. If you have any questions at all about Kindle Direct Publishing or how to properly format your books, make sure and visit us at ebooktemplates101.com and contact us and we'll be happy to help you.